All right, so I guess we can can go ahead and get started. Uh, uh, first up, uh, does anybody have anything, any announcements? Do you want to get a little quick recap of Lambda Comp? Uh, anything? Uh, uh, are the talks online at all anywhere? Did they record them? They recorded them, and they're going to be up at some point. Um, Is there anything you think people in the group might be particularly interested in seeing besides the wonderful Haskell and uh, Erlang talks? It was pretty much 50% Haskell. <clears throat> And um, half the people were really nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't, nobody there was mean. <laughs> <laughs> they were all strongly like, <laughs> <laughs> the, There was like six talks closure. One of them was pretty cool. It showed a bird watching app where you put in a location, tell you which birds are nearby, and use code script. He would, he, he, I just he, noticed she was very carefully choosing her words. So. Well, if someone likes that, I don't want to be like. She no, just got through saying that they were nice. And not they were nice. I know, that's what I'm saying. So, um, the talk on her lane was pretty good. Cool. Were there were a lot of actors giving that talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, so, just one talk on her lane. <laughs> Two on F sharp, fifty percent Haskell, and like six closure. And, cool. and then we had the last day was it open spaces, and I'm not talking about closure, but they had two talks that got pushed back to Sunday because they guy was sick. And I don't know what the other guy was over so him. So then the open spaces only so I had like an hour for me to get organized until like a half hour into it, and by the time they decided who was going to do what. Had about 10 minutes free to do the closure. And one guy talked the entire time. So that was our discussion. So, but. Do you know a lot of cool people though? Uh -huh. I helped somebody with their closure night code thing. Oh, that's right. I saw the tweet on that. Yeah. I just Googled it. Oh, do this. <laughs> oh, cool. You know. Um, but it was good. Probably. Probably next year, hopefully, they have more equal distribution of functional languages. That was my comment. More diversity. Yeah, more diversity. And I will endorse you on LinkedIn for Google skills. My Google skills. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. Good thing that I worked yeah, yeah. there. I mean, you've demonstrated uh, proficiency <laughs> that uh, average developers don't have. Uh, <laughs> namely, by being able to type www.google.com <laughs> into it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Did anybody have anything else? Any any anything else they wanted to bring up? All right. So Q and A time. Closure questions. Anybody have bring anything this month? Something they're having a problem with? Something they want to toss out to the group? Who's using the reagent? Anybody using the reagent? Everybody's on. Yeah, we're on. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, somebody was going to do a reagent. Like you were going to do a like, reagent. Like, yeah. I haven't done anything yeah. at all. You haven't used yeah. it. You, you haven't gone back to it. Has somebody else looked at like rules engines or anything? Because I know there's like one or two that people have written like forward chainers. Do you buy like any of those? Rules engines recommendations with closure? What well, up what logic is probably doing? Uh, I think uh, it's a different style of uh, uh, I think I think Sam's more looking for like a traditional, you know. Yeah, forward uh, chainer. 
something off the of drool. Yeah. Well, well drool is really support. Yeah, drool is really heavy in the interface. Well, so is, yeah. I know there was somebody working on one that was written in Clojure and it had a classic Ops 5 syntax. I just wonder if anybody else has looked into any of that stuff. I haven't. I, I haven't. I don't even know. I mean, are there are there, are there even any closure wrappers for the Java ones or anything? I don't. I don't know of any. Somebody about. did one for Drools about four years ago, but they haven't kept it up to date. And Drools has changed a ton since then. So yeah, it's cool. Probably doesn't work anymore. Cool. Those are my two questions. Off into the wilderness to figure yeah. which ones are out there. Any other any other cute questions? Closure? Something uh, ran into this month? I don't have a closure question. Um, I'm from Nashville. Uh, uh -huh. We have a functional group there. Uh, but we don't usually do code review uh, for time of meeting. It's, uh, it's an exciting idea. Yeah. Have you guys done it a few times? Uh, this will be our second time. And it almost got, I was, I was going to look over the code, but I ended up uh, putting it off to the last minute and having. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Here, let me show you. I, I'm really like, this drives me crazy. Like, look what happened. Like, how, how does your tire? How does the tire do this? Awesome. I, mean, oh my I don't even know. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, I keep joking. I mean, it seriously looks like a Lego tire. Like someone replaced yeah. my tire with a Lego tire. So you are you riding a low pressure, uh, yeah. maybe break a bead by hitting uh, something in the road, and then take a turn. I can say this: I am better at coding than I am with cars, <laughs> <laughs> because there were probably warning signs. <laughs> <laughs> Which I ignored, like shaking wheels and no, it was, it was when I was coming or back from handling the yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, well, you know, it would, it would, yeah, exactly. If there's a problem, I get an exception, right? <laughs> well, no, I didn't. It went, it was, your it went straight to sack trace, right? Core dump, <laughs> tire dump, right? Yeah, this is shreds all over. Yeah, but 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 anyways, so even though I, I didn't prepare like an actual anything, John was in seconds going to come through and uh, uh, walk us through his code and get some feedback here. And again, and since you asked. This is an open thing. If you have something you've written, whether it's a, whether it's just personal, whether it's open source, whether it's your company code, and you feel comfortable, you know, doing it or some variation, you know, put it. We'll put the code out. Let people take a look at it. And uh, uh, in theory, you know, people like me will prepare in advance to uh, 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 give some feedback and you know on what you're doing. And sometimes it's, it's a simple matter of like, oh, I don't, you know, I just didn't know about this. Library, or you know, hey, you, we don't like your style, or you know, hey, why don't you go program Haskell because you can't do closure. <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're nice about it. Uh, uh, but like lots of things, like I, I learned a lot, like uh, you know, like when I first started closure, and I came onto a new team, and I had other people doing already doing things, and they were doing things in a different way. And like when you when you get a chance to get people who do, you don't normally code with and see their stuff, it's really a, a really really good. So if anybody has anything and they want to do one coming up. Uh, uh, let me know. Uh, speaking of things coming up, next month, Dar is talking about real-world API development. He's been doing, actually, he's been rewriting an existing API in uh, Liberator, and so not just like demo API, like actual production you know, API work. So he's going to talk about that. Um, I like the way you worded it. It's professional and expert API. It didn't, didn't sit well. Oh. <laughs> Switching it back and forth. So uh, that we're going to do that next month, but we've got we've got room for uh, you know intro talk, lightning talk, you know demos, uh, something like that in front. Um, I know Sam is working on a couple topics, but we don't have you on the schedule specifically yet. Uh, anybody else brave and want to jump on the schedule now? Put your name out there now. It's on the internet, so we can you know the entirety of the internet will hold you uh, hold you uh, uh, hold you up to it. Unless your name's Nick and you bail on a talk and uh, don't come to the next meeting either. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm calling you out, Nick, because you're not watching. <laughs> yeah, no, if, if anybody sees him, tell him, tell, tell him, tell him to come show up. Uh, he doesn't have to give his talk. I will, I will only beat him up a little bit. Like, he owes 1.4 talks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll, we will we will waive the interest fee there. Yeah. Uh, anybody have any? Does uh, does anybody have anything they want somebody else in the group to talk about? Like, I really wish somebody would talk about that, and we can apply some peer pressure. Well, we had talked about doing the uh, macro workshop, but I wondered if anybody else was interested in that. Ah, okay. So the macro workshop was from Closure West, right? Uh, it was really. I looked at the materials. It was really, really good. 
and Dar attended and he attended the workshop and we have the materials. So we thought maybe for one of our meetup, or one of our meetings to actually walk through the macro materials. It's got some, like I learned, like I, I, that sounds like I'm saying it the wrong way. Uh, I, bit, I went through the material and I saw many things that I didn't know all, you know, in there. And so it's some pretty good material in terms of being like, you know, you know, even beyond what somebody who does, you know, who does it every day, you know, might know. So it's it's good stuff, as well as still targeted at from the beginning at people who don't know yeah. a whole lot, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's things. a pretty good breadth of uh, um, material there. That's interest. So, okay. So we'll we'll uh, we'll. I have a macro interest. I don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got an interest. Um, translating large. Uh, legacy list applications. To oh, uh, who, yeah. that do you have a specific application that you're looking at, or um, one called Psych? Uh, so, ah, yeah, 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 we know that. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Is that is, is that code available? I mean, is is, is that open? Is open that open site, source. Yes. Open site. Okay. So, um, open the source code. So so explain. So so Psych is a uh, engine. Yeah. It's a knowledge base engine. Yeah, and uh, so are, and there's there's are they still developing that here? Yep, they're still going. Okay. Do you work there? Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Who knows who you work for? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> you take this team and more. Uh, yeah. No. Has has anybody had to? I, so I I got my start. Uh, the first project I worked on, I worked on with a bunch of common list guys, and we had some existing common list code. I, but I didn't really, I didn't have to port it so much as look at what it was doing and do like, do something that was more closury and like. So I, it wasn't really direct port. It was more like take this stuff that we've prototyped, yeah, you because know, we know common list, and you go do it in closure. So I don't, I can't say that I have a ton of experience uh, there. Have you, have you? Is it something you've already started on, or you're just thinking no. about? No, it's going to be a big project. Okay. Cool. Uh, and, but, and this will, will this be for the open source side of it, or for no? Nope. But okay. So, <laughs> so in other words, we wouldn't be able to see the you know probably Maybe see the portions of it. Okay. No, no open source yeah. Thing. yeah. So that one might be interesting if you if you wanted to like if there were some small pieces that were like maybe representative that you could yeah doesn't even have to be usable in itself yeah. that you could put out there. Yeah. We could take a look at it as a group you know as a group and you know. Get, you know, say how, how we might implement some of those things in Clojure. That'd be great. All right, so uh, uh, send me a note. Uh, 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 you can find us on, right here on, uh, here, this is me, uh, so you can contact us here or tweet, yeah, I'm Maximo Burrito uh, on, on Twitter, so you can also tweet me and uh, we can f figure out how to move forward. I think that would be great fun. Okay. Uh, and because it's sort of like the, uh, the code review, it's sort of like, code something. <laughs> it involves code enclosure, so it's almost the same thing. <laughs> Doug should be doing this, right? All from, it's the guru, right? You should write some, yeah, you should write some, you write some psych rules to do the transaction. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much what they did to get it to run job. Yeah, I actually interviewed there uh, back around like 95, 96, when I was uh, you know, finishing up my undergrad at UT. And I didn't end up going there, but. Uh, I've always wondered what you know. I've always wondered kind of what you know. What happened? Yeah, what, what what was going on there and how they managed to get. Uh, uh, yeah, it just was like fascinating sort of right? things. Yeah. Thirty uh, two. Yep. I remember when they were first starting the uh, MCC. Yeah, a long time. That's cool. All right, so it's a million lines of list they've got, so it's going to be a big project. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, well, there you'll gain back some of the power of, uh, you know, the JVM in a sense, yeah. with, but with combined with Lisp language, so that'll be cool. Is that, that's what, 200 lines of closure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the main. <laughs> Remember this. <Yeah. laughs> right. Anybody else have a request? Something they'd lot, really love if somebody talked about? Friend. Friend. And uh, there's a new one that's funny. Oh, is that buddy. friend? Uh, buddy. Buddy. Friend and buddy. So, uh, security. Single page closure script app and uh, using uh, Google OAuth uh, friend and uh, or any other library. That sounds like a good project for a hack day. It does. Sound yeah. Like. All right. We, we didn't have great attendance at our last hack day, but uh, uh, 
if uh, somebody has a project idea, maybe tell me a date that you might be able to show up for, for one, and then at least we'll have two people there to hack on it. Uh, no, last time, last time we had like four people, so you know it was a little smaller. So I figured, like, I don't know if we're hitting the wrong dates or times or something. Right. So uh, that is something like to bring downstairs later if like you've been wanting to come to the hack days, but like didn't like the times or locations or something. Give some feedback because yeah, you know, we were having yeah, you know, you know, we, we were having like you know six, eight, ten people sometimes, and like last one sort of was a little small. So might have just been like good weather, our first good weather day, you know, uh, a couple months ago. Uh, when do you usually have a little friend example app? We usually do them on the, uh, we've been doing them on Saturday or Sunday afternoons at uh, Cafe Express, uh, uh, sort of a weekend. Somebody suggested maybe trying going, we used to do some on the weeknights and then some on the weekends to kind of go back and forth. For the weekends, it seemed like we're much, you know, you know, people were much more interested in coming out and we had more time. Yeah. Do you so. think you'll be doing anything in the next two weeks? Um, that depends. Uh, I'm just curious. You'll just be here for the next couple weeks, right? Yeah, yeah, but I would love to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I will make yeah, a note of that. Like calendar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 13th yeah. and 14th. For this yeah, because that would normally be about the time we would uh, do something. So, like, uh, two two week, you know, this weekend, the following weekend. So, we'll 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 see and maybe put that out. Uh, uh, this is typically a Sunday. Yeah, but we could do set, set, yeah Saturday or sometimes. Or, have we usually have we usually been doing Sundays no, or Saturdays? Saturdays? We usually do Saturdays. Yeah, because the Gojo was on Sunday. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, true. Right. So the weekend of the twentieth would be back. Okay. So the thirteenth is open. Thirteenth. Yeah, it'd be better to jump on the thirteenth. Okay. The wife finds out. And it's on the <laughs> <laughs> she might be on vacation or something. Oh. The, wait, wait. Let me, let me tweet that out. Uh, does, does she have a Twitter handle? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not that. <laughs> no, 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 not not that anybody has that. Okay. So okay. So maybe 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 we'll maybe we'll do some. Maybe we'll try to organize something for this weekend then. Cool. Uh, Thirteenth pack day. I've discovered a couple of plugins I can tell you all about. I was just telling Sam about yeah. these. So. Like what kind? Uh, uh, Lane Engine plugin. Oh. Uh, cool. One of okay. them is uh, uh, Auto March, which uh, continuously refreshes the marginalia documentation. You're using marginalia for uh, looking at your uh, your the documentation of your closure code. It'll just sit there and, and spend like a, a walk here and regen the, the documentation. So all you have to do is hit refresh. And then uh, there's another one that is similar called Instant Closure Cheat Sheet. And it's still in, in the same. see, I found some code with uh, core async that breaks it. So it may not work for you if you're using core async, but for my non-core async project, it, it uh, provides a uh, searchable, a fast performance searchable uh, documentation for your closure code and it mixes in the standard closure documentation along with uh, the, uh, your code. So you've got a whole search bar. That's called Norman Lane? Uh, the first one is called uh, Auto March and it uses marginality. Uh, and uh, the second one is called Instant Closure. Excellent. There you go. You just got a little size issue. Mm. Close enough. Cool. Uh, I, we, we've done some marginalia, but I haven't actually. I wasn't the one to actually do it, so I don't know. So I would, I could, I'll, I'll be up for interest in maybe, maybe for our next lightning talk, that could be something interesting. Yes. Uh, all right, so well, we I think we've uh, we we we've, we've sort of gone through announcements. So I'm gonna let John come up, and he's gonna walk us through uh, his code, and uh, we're gonna give him some feedback. And uh, yeah, I, normally one one of us would be kind of doing this and you know asking questions, but again, as we saw my tire, I wasn't able to do that. And I'm gonna go get something, but go ahead and get started, and I'll be back in just one second. Are you okay with heckling? Yeah, that's <laughs> good. Thanks, anyway. Uh, <coughs> you just throw stuff at us, right? <laughs> should give him the rotten tomato. You must yeah. pickle them in German. Because there's no Wi Fi here. Right. All right, so the spoiler thing was I was tired of making up invoices uh, for different customers at the same time with different needs. So I just want to say, all right, I'm just going to write down all my stuff that I work on and tag it with the project and then generate my invoices from that. So, uh, cool. So I made up two fake clients for this uh, purpose. and. Uh, so basically the, the idea is you would just click on that client, it would show up with the invoice and list out um, the, uh, 
projects that were done on which date, how many hours, and uh, what the bill is. Essentially, so pretty, pretty simple. Nice. Uh, it's clean too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Needs more fine print, and uh, <laughs> I love the use of white space. Uh, so yeah. So I need double your rate. Those are good rates, huh? <laughs> Anyway, I gotta get this done so I can send out some invoices. <laughs> <laughs> That's compelling. <laughs> Tell me out. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'll just show you sort of the, the data format. Um, so basically, just a my data is just a file, Eden file with just a big map. So uh, there's um, map entry for the clients, and uh, basically just the, the data about the client, and then. Um, Nested within that is the project, so that my end goal is down here where I enter in my you know, time chunks of what I worked on that I can just say I was working on this project and you can look at what client it belongs to and what the range is, etc. Uh, so yeah, just a list of clients, what projects belong to those clients. Um, I have the extra complication that some projects for some clients cost more than others based on how they're built. Um, I think that's the main the main sort of complication. Um, so that's why there's an ex there's a rate for a company that's sort of the default rate and then for certain projects there would be a different rate for that project. <clears throat> and then the timesheets are pretty easy, just uh, just a vector of Days and then each day has some vector of chunks. So from this, from this start time to that stop time, what project? Is that straightforward enough for the the data format? Mm -hmm. uh, I just went with the um, kind of date time instance that's default with Eden, which is kind of a hassle. Right? It's redundant where I tell it a date and then I have to tell it um, for the start and stop times the same date. I didn't see a good default way with Eden to just have the time. I don't know if anybody else has messed with Eden that much. You say have the time, like the current time? But yeah, but I, I do mean it's without the data. Without the, the data, data, I just want to start stops. Oh, um, start hours, stop hours, and just stop the date. Yeah, but I wanted, I just want Eden to handle all you're this stuff. Well, you can make there. your own types, right? Yeah, how do you yeah. do it? Your Eden, the reader extension for Eden. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think any of us have an example. Some somebody did this as a lightning talk way back when the feature came out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me write that down. Uh, yeah. I want to uh, see if we can get somebody. Uh, I saw I knew that was possible, but I didn't. I didn't know what it was called to find an example. Of it. I can. I searched around a little bit, but I never found. But that's how you would do that. That's what I want. Reader to is it? Reader? Yeah. Custom reader literals. Is that what it is? Let yeah. Okay, so that's basically the, the data format, and then uh, you know, at some point I wanted to make it so that I could also have here's a web page, you know, just say start, stop, and input data into this Eden file as well. But for now, it's just Steve here has examples for you after you're done. Okay, reader literals. Um, so then it's just the, the invoice is just generated by uh, a ring. Ring web apps are pretty, pretty simple. We just, you know, basically use this one where you uh, type in client and then put in the the map key for that that client and then generates the invoice. Um, so then basically it calls this wrap client function, which is here, and then that goes in and uh, grabs the whole map. Out of that file, um, prints out some of the HTML stuff. The header, which has too much white space for now, and then uh, use Hiccup to to do the HTML. Cool. And then uh, it calls this this roll up namespace, which has all the, the real logic in it. So, so it just makes a table with all the data pulled out from this. Role of namespace, so that's probably the thing to look at for anything interesting. But all straightforward and 
Yeah, yeah that's cool. No heckling? <laughs> <laughs> Too much white space. Need a different color background. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so there's the, the rule of namespace here. Uh, just reads, slurps in the, the, the file that I had, um, calls Eden read string to turn that into <clears throat> a big map. Um, and then, let's see, probably the one, the one thing I was asking about earlier <coughs> um, that, that I like now. Um, What's going on in that, um, that git client lookup there? All right, git client lookup. Create a macro and projects to their clients so timesheet chunks can be filtered by client. Uh, so nested. Um, basically, I want to get all the projects out of all the timesheets and then assign them to a client. So basically, I just want to filter out all the, the time chunks that I worked for one client. So that's sort of this deep nesting that and that. Probably not good. <laughs> if I look at it, I don't know what it does. <laughs> yeah, so, so for things like that, it, it's helpful to, to name them, either to put them out in a separate function or even let the function outside of it so you can let it into a name, right? So let, you know, manage, you know, process client, and then you map, you know, process client across clients of data. <laughs> things like that, when you can give things names, can really, really make your closure code. Okay, so you're, you're saying I've got another thing. two anonymous functions that I, if I would have named those, then it'd be better. Yeah, 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 and so either take them out, if they're not if they're not closing over something, take them out, you know, outside of the def in, or just at the top, you know, top let, or even let fn, yeah. right at the top, and then the body is apply merge, and then it starts to make a little bit more sense. If you do pull them out too, make sure you make them private functions so they don't, Trick people outside the namespace that they should be able to call those. Okay. So yeah. there's a bunch of code out there and it's always annoying like that where it's really inner functions, but they don't make them private. Because the client doesn't trust you. Yeah, there you go. That's how I write because I trust you to use my code properly. <laughs> yeah, but when there's no comments, it's like, okay. We just put in some of the different code. Yeah, yeah, that's actually, I prefer doing that too. Okay, right. So in my in my map of at the top, I had the clients, and I had what projects they have. So this just kind of digs in, finds the projects, and then makes the projects from a low level data point to a key, and then and then the value. So you're just building another hash. Yeah, just the, you're rearranging the data, inverting the key values. So, uh, that's probably a way better way to do that. <laughs> um, so then. Uh, this chunk duration is pretty pretty straightforward on itself, right? I just say, you know, I want to associate into that map for all those chunks. What's the duration from start to stop? Right. But what I didn't know when I was doing it first is what's the right way to do that? You know, because that's sort of deeply nested. And uh, so when I first did it, um, I did like post walk, and I'd go through, and then on every node, I would do some test to see is this a duration node. So based on you know what keys are in this node, <clears throat> is it a is it a time chunk so that I can do this calculation on it? I never felt really good about that, and then I found this um, this Spectre library from Nathan Mars. I don't know if anybody else has heard of that. Yeah, and uh, it was like this is exactly what I was looking for actually. So it's almost like sort of an SQL almost for closure of data structures. And the idea is um, you can do select and update on nested data structures with this sort of language. And, uh, so here I've got this calculate durations function. We call it this update function from the Spectre library. And basically it goes in and says, okay, match on this key first. And then the next thing is a vector. So this S Spectre all says get everything out of the vector. And it says, okay, from all that stuff in that vector, grab the thing with the chunks key, and that has another vector. It says, give me all those. And then I can pass in this function where I update that map essentially and associate this 
duration into all these time slices, and then the whole thing cuts back out into the map with extra data in it. So it just felt a lot cleaner than doing the walk or post walk and testing every time to see if I'm in the right place. So it's at each of the each of the things in the chunk. It's gonna yeah you know, for each item for each item in that chunks vector for every one it's gonna kind of do an update in for that basically right yeah so what it what that whole library did is it said okay you know I've got I've got this map so first give me the timesheet part of that map and the next thing is that that timesheet entry is a vector so give me everything in that vector and then give me the chunks key and that's another vector and then then I have another all so it gives me all those. And then what it does is um, gives you that calls that function. That, yeah, yeah, then it calls that function on that thing, and my my function was in here. Right. So, so basically, you're adding a duration to each one of every right. chunk. Yeah. <clears throat> That's right. I wonder. I don't know anything about this, but I wonder if uh, you could use your um, like your Eden reader uh, if you do your own data type to um, like kind of rehydrate as you read. Yeah, okay. I don't know. I don't know. That probably yeah. that work. Well, if you yeah, yeah it, well, if work, you yeah. if each chunk had a ha, you know, was like a hash chunk or something like that, then as it read, read it into an object, you get you know an object of some sort that represented yeah. your right. your thing and did some additional data. So you made a chunk. So you put a tag in front of the vector, or it wouldn't be a vector. I guess it would be a vector, and then when they read right, read that vector, and you would run your function on it. Yeah, load time. I mean, kind of like what you were doing before. Yeah. Let me that out. That way you wouldn't be double processing it. Wait, why am I double processing? Because you're going to calculate your duration. Oh, you mean, I read the entire thing and then I go back and I walk through no, it. No, while you're reading it, it would calculate the duration on each one. Yeah, but it's calculated data. You want to do that. Yeah, but each chunk there is, you know, got end things in it with start and stop. You're just going to sum them up. Right? All right, I'll look at that. But if you if you read it into a record, right? Just like if you read it into an object that happened to have that method, you might not actually be calculating it, but it would have like a you know a get record kind of thing on it, right? That's a good experiment. We should uh, we should try that and see if we like it. I'm I'm kind of skeptical. Like when I see that, I'm like that's a little bit too much magic going on, and I don't like a lot of magic in my code. But it could be very interesting mm -hmm. as a technique. Yeah, or some kind of performance optimization. Has any has anybody done anything like that? I would. Like use, using literals for, for like more complex things. Your comment was for you a lot. Well, that's a that's a mark against it. Now I can understand is so if you're if you're doing a query, where are you trying to update it? So wouldn't you just have the structure as your you know if you have do you have to do like a two passes if you have what you're creating the structure and then updating it? Okay, so I have this as a file. Right, and then my first pass is to read it into a in-memory data structure, and then I go back through and I update my in-memory data structure with this, you know, the summation of all the chunks. Summation, and that's just so I can read it and just okay. have that. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily. That's why I was saying when you read it in, you can have the literal in front, and when you read those start and stops, you can have it call that literal and give you the chunk for the. You know, the chunks on right and then you would calculate that on the fly as you're reading all the chunks in yeah and then as soon as you're done you would the last element of that literal would be the chunks on right um, or, or what's faster yeah what's right in the file yeah me you just right. you have the you you need faster memory. Yeah, yeah. It's, pretty, it's just an interesting thing that do yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you enter it's the data. Yeah, so yeah. I keep track of my time. Yeah, that's yeah. Oh, that's the only you run. You can do it, right? Right. right. Well, times. Well, then I have to calculate. Yeah. yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm really bad at math. No, I, I actually like this cleaner yeah. without yeah. just do the calculation on yeah. that Yeah. You can even do the calculation yeah. without lazy. Do you need, always need every calculation for you know the, how many years are going to be in the file? How long will the file be? <laughs> well, I do a new one each month, so I hope that I can bill so much one day yeah, that, that matters. That <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I would just calculate it every time. I don't <laughs> think you're out of enough disk space for that. <laughs> 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 you better make it binary. Let's make much good ones. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Um, hypercritical code review. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just find what he's done so far. Yeah. Oh, you are. I, I like to use the Spectre though. I haven't seen it used before. Yeah. But especially on a big data structure like that, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Syntax wise, you should tab in the flatten block. Okay. You got it aligned with the plot. The plot merge. What? It's hard to read. Yeah, that was the first thing I reformatted the, the, the file when I changed it out just now. Sorry about that. That's okay. <coughs> it's your code. You live there. We're just visiting. It, right? it shouldn't be that deeply nested and it wouldn't be a problem. If it really so you should have <laughs> you should a lot function. Um, okay, oh, so then I've got, if I just do this in here. Uh, for the, that first page that we pulled up that just showed all the clients. So that's, that's the Spectre library and this is kind of like SQL select based on some path essentially in the data structure. Um, and this basically says, you know, I don't want to show my client, you know, when my lunch break was. I just want to say on this day I worked for the total number of hours on this project and not break it up into multiple records they just see for what day, how many hours it was. So this merges together um, the durations by project by day. <clears throat> um, and then basically for the month show whole, whole month for one client. client is, <coughs> grabs everything for a month for a client. Uh, okay. Oh, so one of the clients needed a uh, pivot chart for their accounting system. So basically they said, okay, you've got all these different projects, but we need to see not only every day what did you work on, but you know, show us the, the pivot chart of how many hours were worked on for that project per month. So that's what this project hours is. That's the pivot chart. Can you chart your appropriation every quarter? Just like that. Just like that. Screw it. I did it at one job. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's one job. I didn't, uh, I did not charge anybody for making this closure stuff because this is a. <laughs> there's a JavaScript pivot table thing in. On it afterwards, it's called pivot table.js. Uh -huh. So you could slam that on your report, tell them to get a web page. <coughs> well, it was pretty easy doing closure since so already done. Yeah, I only know that because I stumbled across it the other day looking for data table stuff. Uh, okay, so this project rate so is to handle the complication that the clients have default rates and then special rates for certain projects. So that just finds all the places where a project doesn't have a raise and applies the default raise. <laughs> uh, summary project with the hours. How much, you know, at the end I have to say how much does the bill for the month, the cost per month, and then uh, <coughs> some date formatting. So, pretty straightforward. <laughs> Any more heckling? <laughs> There's something about your your uses of, of maps and, and, and anonymous functions that I find. And I mean I've you know used map in, in a lot, but I still find it hard to read or figure out what's going on. And I'm not sure why. Probably probably moving out to a let form would make it a little easier to see you could describe what that anonymous function is and see intuitively what you're mapping over. Yeah. Because then you yeah. name the anonymous function in the lab. Yeah. 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 I find so it's still really local. So it's made. It, it's because it, I'm pretty sure it's because it's seen, it increases the distance from the function uh, all the way. You're applying that, that anonymous function to the vector V over on the far right. Right? Uh, oh, we're talking about line data. Right. Here. So. No, you. What were you talking about? Oh, uh, this one. Great, great. Test. So it was on the line that you were at. 
Yeah, no, at the end. Right, it's the B at the end, right? It's because you've got the, the whole definition of the function. Yeah, see, I'm not actually clear. I think that might be the return. Yeah, what it's operating on is being passed in by the cutting reference. Yes. Yeah, it's so about this is my formatting here. Oh, yeah. You're right. But the cost per project. So, uh, like another stylistic thing, what I tend to do is, uh, again, with the naming, but uh, rather than a, a big chain of functions, wrap everything in, in lets and just have a let for each step. Um, All right, yeah. And, and it makes it a little more um, serial looking. Yeah. It, yeah. It's the, you, have the, you have to name everything. Right? So, yeah. So, like, first, you know, I, I first I build up a crazy looking function like this, and, you know, it's all in one uh, statement, basically, and then I break it out. All right. That's a good suggestion. I'm going back to look at it, I have trouble understanding what I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What uh, editor are you using? This is IntelliJ with Cursor. Um, are you using like a, some sort of a par edit plugin? It's got it built in, yeah. Uh, it seems like the indentation is a little different from what I would expect it to do. I don't know if it's outside uh, of what par edit normally takes care of. Yeah, it doesn't seem to work very well. I agree with that. I have trouble. It seems like I find it a lot making the indentation. So that's probably why this part really looks bad is because, you know, if I hit a new line, I don't. It does it for you, and then you know, like, if I want to move this one over, right, in backspace and make it line up with that threading macro, it just puts it back to the top line. So oh, yeah. it's like I don't have control over them. <laughs> so I think that is a problem with cursor. I think there's a setting for that, like whether how much control it takes over your indentation. Yeah, the other thing is it doesn't do quotes very well. Like that time, I put the cursor in the right place, but as soon as you sort of Get out of it and try to put a quote back in there, it always puts in two, and then you try to delete it. Can you slurp it in there? Slurp? Like you, you oh. said, you wanted to. Like if I had. Yeah. And then I want to do a slurp, and it doesn't work with. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, that was bad. <laughs> yeah, so now. <laughs> it wasn't even looking at the string. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't yeah. slurp strings, right? So. Uh, it doesn't cost any money yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll probably buy it whenever he makes it to support the guy. Yeah. So you could just do map colon log there, right? Map. Instead of the anonymous oh. function. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, the little yeah. things like that. Uh, click and clean it up a lot. Let's see. Yeah. Log. Yeah. How do you all handle uh, those cases where you got? You know, like the first two, you'd, you'd like to use thread left, and then the next one you'd like to be thread right, and then the next two, yeah. Thread right thread right in the middle. The <laughs> there actually, somebody actually wrote another macro where like you could have a marker for where the thread, where it actually threads into. Isn't there? But a, I think at that point, like I just don't use them. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's there's also you do the function and then call the function. You basically make another function. Wrap a function, right. and a function that's in order. order. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then isn't Which there is what I've done? But I'm like, yeah. Isn't there like a thread as or something like? No. In one set or as? Or, what was that? It's, uh, it's this one. As expression name. <coughs> I remember that. What's it do? <laughs> Bind the name to expression. The name that I will call the meeting for Whoa. That sounds crazy. That's probably not right. Never mind. I don't know. <laughs> it has a bracket over there. It's like so No, I think it's kind of both. Cool. Binds the name to the expression, evaluates the first form in the lexical context of that function. And binds name to that result, repeat yeah. for each successive. Yeah, okay. right. that's right. So, yeah, they give the name and contribute the result of the last one. <laughs> and, uh, All right. Cool. Thanks.
Yep. So I was I was uh, playing with that function uh, there. So this is this is uh, this was my first thought on how to rewrite a uh, git client map here. Uh, uh, since you were since you were going th going through it, this seemed to make a little bit more sense. Basically, seeing you know, for each client, bigger. what uh, is it? Uh, I go. Okay, I'm in the wrong window here. He's dead. I'm tired. Yeah. So uh, uh, for the for each client and the client data, right? And so I'm I'm you know since this is a key and a value, rather than calling key and you know making it, you just kind of destructure it, right? right? So destructure each key. So client is the client is the keyword we wanted. Client data is the actual data, the value of the key, right? And then, then destructuring uh, the projects inside of that as a project key, because you're basically creating a map of project keys to clients, and then I just merge them all together. So that was my thought of, you know, uh, you know my initial thought of, uh, of how I might make that a little bit cleaner. Yeah, it's way better. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and uh, requires can go in the uh, namespace up here. Uh, it's functionally, it actually is pretty much the same thing. Yeah. But uh, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, wow, what are, you know, what's going on here? That's well, kind of confusing, right? With a uh, with that, I was just find the first example that works in the copy and paste. Yeah, yeah. So you just yeah you know, put all this stuff uh, up up here. That was worthwhile. Yeah, we can go eat. <laughs> nine, yeah. Anyways, uh, okay, so let's get to the uh, topic, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad you went through that because I didn't really, uh, you know, I hadn't really, you know, prepared. Use single key combination to delete left and this one. Yeah. Uh, this is the, uh, this is a, uh, uh, hold up, one more. Uh, that's the one. Uh, so there's, there's two ways I can do it, right? So let's say if I want an as. If I do a command R, right, or uh, option R, uh, then it pulls that out. Or if I do up, it pulls out everything, that one and everything else to the right of it. So it just depends on which one, one you want to. Uh, control H, one, uh, uh, one of them is uh, par edit splice XP killing backward, and the other is, uh, sorry. Uh, and the other is par at raise sex p. So the uh, raise is the one where you take one and you like you pull that only thing and get rid of everything on both sides of of the uh, of the expression and just raise it up. And the uh, 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 killing backwards is where you you raise everything up and you kill everything before. So depending on what you're uh, doing. Eclipse is very violent. So there you go. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, dependency management. Uh, this is something that uh, I decided to talk about it yeah, this, this week because this is what I have been doing. This is what I've been spending my closure life on for the last uh, uh, probably month uh, uh, is uh, we've been moving at work. So at work we have a large closure project and uh, we, but we just have one monolithic project, right? And so we build, right? We build a one monolithic project and we, we actually take that and we would build an Uber jar or as I showed off last week, the meta jar, right? We build that as one giant jar and ship that off to production and run it, right? Well, that's a pretty that's a pretty messy way to go go about things. And you know, as we as we grew as a company, we really needed to start making use of uh, uh, of uh, of some of the you know of breaking things up into into uh, smaller chunks and uh, managing it the way that you might manage, say, a professional software project as opposed as opposed to you know and a hack that you know you know, got you uh, got you acquired, right? I mean, there's very different uh, demands there, right? <laughs> Have you been there? <laughs> Okay. I see the Martin Fowler thing. I don't know. He did a model of first. He was talking about microservices, but he's saying the way what you've done is the better way because you understand it before you try to break it apart instead oh. of trying to do it from the bottom up. Oh no, I, I absolutely I, I, I absolutely hate over architecting things and doing things before it's time. Right? I mean, we got we it it served us fine when we were three people and you know. Uh, on, on our team, and now our team's growing, and the other teams are growing, and we're interacting, and now we're in a larger organization where other teams in other groups want to be able to use our code and do things, and you know, and now now we have that pain, so now we solve you know uh, uh, solve that. 
So, and of course, in Clojure, it's pretty, we're pretty lucky because we, we have all of this Java infrastructure available to us, right? Uh, so there's a, uh, uh, all of Clojure dependencies management is, all of Clojure stuff is, you know, is managed uh, in Maven. So uh, I guess it's pretty much, I, from, from memory, like about at least two thirds of everybody in here comes from a Java background, right? You know? Am I mis, uh, misremembering that? Miss the uh, who, who comes from a Java a pretty strong Java background. Okay, okay, maybe about half. Okay, so some of you guys may actually know a lot more about Maven than I do. Uh, I got through you know ten plus years as a professional Java developer, knowing pretty much nothing about uh, uh, <laughs> Maven. Or, you know, somebody else set, set, set you know set, set up the projects. Somebody else ran the Nexus server. Somebody else managed all that, and I just wrote my code right. And so uh, it, when I got to Clojure, I brought like all of that zero knowledge that I had about uh, <laughs> uh, Maven with me. And I've kind of had to learn it all from, you know, from the beginning. So some of you, so if I get anything, I guess I say that to say, for you Java guys, if I get some Maven stuff wrong, you know, let me know. So fortunately, uh, the, the part of Maven that Clojure uses, which is just the repository, is pretty straightforward. So uh, there's not a lot to get wrong. So the first thing I, I want to do here is I want to create a new project. So my last project I made was Hippo. So give me a give me a name. Somebody. Giraffe. Giraffe. Oh, I'm not gonna spell giraffe. <laughs> spell it wrong. Eddie. Skunk. Okay, skunk. There we go. Thank you. Keep it keep it keep keep, keep it keep it to my level here, please. Just want to make sure it's okay if it stands. <laughs> All right. So. Let's see. Okay, so first thing we do is I want to. I know we talked about this like, like way back at like six months or so ago. We did a little bit of stuff about uh, uh, how you know how the local repository worked and some of these things. But I want to sit through this just real quick to make sure we're all on the same page. Okay, so we create a new project and we have a dev project and uh, we have a project name and uh, ID. Okay, so these actually, turns out that these are actually uh, Maven things. And by the way, all project stuff is pretty much all lining in stuff. So Clojure itself, none of this is actually Clojure core concepts. Clojure internally has no concept of how you distribute things, how you name them. It has no, con all it knows is namespaces and you know, how to load them in from a class path, right? That's all Clojure itself has. So all of this is infrastructure on top, uh, on top of uh, Clojure. So I should, I should you know, uh, start with that. So to start with, we, we define a project here, and we've got a project name and a version number. Well, it turns out that these are just your Maven uh, coordinates, right? The same way that when we have a dependency here, and we say our project is using org Clojure, Clojure 160, uh, this is the project name, right? So this is the same as Skunk here. There's a version number. It's the same as our version number up here. And if there's no group ID here, then the group ID is the same as the project name. So this is something I really didn't get at all. So in, in Maven terms, actually, this project would be skunk slash skunk, right? You know, it just defaults to that. But in Clojure, we don't we we don't always we we don't yeah you know, we don't usually have a different value, but we could, and if we did, we would put it there. Uh, so uh, we uh, so just to show you, our project lives when you're using Line again. Our project lives within this Maven. Uh, infrastructure. Even if you're not actually deploying it anywhere or doing anything, you still have uh, you, you still sort of have a Maven coordinate identity. But we're all probably more used to using uh, uh, this uh, dependencies down here. So I want to talk a little bit about what this means and where it comes from. Right? Okay. So these are Maven coordinates here, and this is saying we want uh, uh, org closure closure version 1.6. Uh, what, what does that mean? Where does it come from, right? Is this some magic thing? Uh, well, uh, all of our dependencies are looked up in uh, Maven repositories. And the first thing I'll show you is how, to, how we figure out like where in the world is Linengen looking? Where is it pulling these uh, uh, jars from? So I'm gonna show you in a, are we good there? Yeah. Uh, repositories. A uh, line pprint is an awesome uh, Linengen plugin, since we are talking about Linengen, pl Linengen plugin earlier. It will actually, instantiate your project map from your thing and tell you what your values are. So we start off, this is what uh, 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 Linengen knows about it. It knows about Maven Central, and it only knows about the Maven Central releases. So your Clojure project will not be able to import snapshots uh, you know, from you know, uh, uh, Maven Central. It will just import uh, actual release projects. So this is how we get uh, uh, all of our uh, uh, you know uh, general Java dependencies is through Maven Central. 
Um, let me show you what this looks like. And the other one it knows about is Clojars. We'll get to Clojars in uh, just a moment. So let me actually pull this up here. Oh, interesting, I can't, uh, so. Uh, I guess I can't browse here. There we go. So here, I, here I'm actually going into uh, going into the repository. So Maven repository is just something that's addressable on the internet, right? So when we say that the, we want to go to the group ID or closure, which is what our dependency is, it literally goes out somewhere to a Maven repository and just tries to find or closure. And here's closure right here, right? And it actually says so. Then it goes, you know, so this is the this is the project name, and it actually finds 1.6.0. And uh, down somewhere in here is a 1.6.0 .jar, right? So uh, line again, when you ask for this stuff, it just pulls it down, uh, uh, pulls it down to your local Maven repository, and then uh, you know, adds it to your class path, right? What file name is ASC? Uh, that is a, that's actually a uh, uh, signature. Sorry? The cryptography signature? Is yes, yes, it's, it's the signature. So some of some jars are signed. We'll talk about this in a little bit. So this is how, like, this is how you can know that the jar that you're pulling down, in theory, this is the way that you would know that the jar you're pulling down is a legitimate jar from some source. Because, uh, uh, well, you were, you, you've were you been doing Ruby. Remember all the big Ruby uh, gem security thing, right? It's the same sort of thing. And uh, uh, of trying to prevent, you know, what if somebody, you know, <laughs> Hello. What if someone? I am uh, not able to get control of the screen again. <coughs> I am, yeah, my Wi-Fi is off. Okay, there we are. Yeah, maybe they reset it or something. Who knows? Did Did yours go down too? I'm good. Okay. Well, I am on now, so there we go. Uh, yeah, so basically, sign is this way of signing them so that you know that that hasn't been tampered with uh, along the way. And there's a big push on closure jars a, a couple of years ago uh, to try to sign all the closure stuff, right? And that really hasn't gone gotten anywhere. So, but we'll talk when we talk about closure jars. Maybe we'll come back and talk a little bit about signing and why uh, that didn't. Uh, uh, why, why why we still don't have uh, 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 that. Uh, in, a close, in the closure world yet. So, and that's all it is. It's a pretty simple in infrastructure. And all it, all it is is that all that we have here is a way of specifying which set of repositories we know about and uh, what we do, you know, what we do with them. So that's how we look up closure 1.6. And also, you know, of course, closure 1.6 may have uh, uh, other things in there that tell it, you know, there, there may be maybe more dependencies along the tree. Uh, the other one we use is Clojars, so you know, we're all probably somewhat familiar with Clojars. And Clojars is where we deploy closure, uh, closure projects to. Right, so if you're downloading uh, a closure project, you're probably getting it from Clojars, uh, unless it's Clojure itself, which is distributed in, in Maven Central. A lot of the core Clojure stuff is distributed in Maven, Maven Central, as well as all of the like libraries and things you use. So pretty much everything you put in a typical project is probably pulling down from Clojars, right? And so those are all that it knows about. And if you want to use anything else, you have to uh, uh, tell uh, uh, tell Line again how to look this stuff up. So. That's what, uh, uh, what, our, what, what we'll do here. Uh, I will show you a couple other things uh, as, a, as a reminder to show you, uh, uh, you know, if you're trying to track this stuff down, a really great thing to use here is a, a line depth tree. So I can actually go through and see exactly what, like, because line again is gonna in insert some other things and your uh, one particular library may have dependencies like some of this is some of this like cider interval is coming from my plug, you know, my line again plugins, and those are called, you know, including other things, which are including other things, and you can't actually see your whole entire dependency uh, uh, dependency tree with line uh, line tree depths. And if you really want to see like exactly what's being pulled in, uh, I know we talked about this before, but line class path will actually show you. Uh, uh, your full entire class path and show you where each of these jars are and where it is in your local repository. So, so to, in order to keep itself from having, you know, just a standard Maven thing, in order to keep from having to pull everything down down off of the internet each time, uh, it pulls it down and uses your local Maven repository 
right? And this is just showing you which version of the jars uh, you're using. So if you're really curious, like you can't figure out, you know, did I get the latest snapshot of you know, what's going on here? You can look at your class path and actually go into your local Maven repository and uh, uh, mess with this stuff. I use line class path all, all of the time to, uh, to uh, debug things. All right, so how do we actually how do we actually distribute things, right? Well, first thing you can do is, uh, and we talked about this before too, is if you just want to do make a make a version of a project and use it within your own projects, you can do line install. Line install will actually take your jar. Uh, so if I if I if I am our project here, I'll do line install. And it's, what it's gonna do is it's gonna build the jar and it's not gonna publish it anywhere, it's just gonna publish it to our own local uh, Maven repository, right? So as soon as I do that, you see it's created uh, this jar file and if I, whoop, if I look for it, and I did not type, there it is. Find the version, and there's my, uh, you know, there's my jar file that it built. So it's published locally. As soon as you do that, any closure project on your system will be able to use that jar. So pretty straightforward. But that's not very interesting because there's no collaboration there. It's not. It's just something you can do locally. But this is something you can do if you ever want to build your own version of something. You want to build a snapshot of something. You just uh, build it, line install, and you, know, you can use it locally on your system. So I do this quite a bit when I'm trying to trying to hack other projects and I want to create uh, one-off versions of them. But we've talked about this uh, before. Uh, so the interesting thing is what what do we do when we actually want to uh, uh, want to create our own content? So this is where I want this is where everybody here can get get involved. Okay. So I'm gonna, so I've set up a, a Maven repository at repo.nostattrace.com. Okay. And uh, if you want to use the repository, what I need you to do is, I have a gist, so gist.github.com slash, so if you go to gist.github.com slash orb, the first one here, profiles, so orb, O-R-B, uh, uh, the first one here will show you what, you, what you'll need to add into your, uh, uh, into, your, uh, into your projects. So I'll ask you to, and the password here is, not password, it is keep, what was it? It was keep Austin Lambda from our little sticker, right? Uh, so, uh, so use keep Austin Lambda here instead where I have the big password. So put, so put, this, uh, put this off here in, so the Maven repository I've set up is private. Right, private means you know not everybody can publish to it because if I did, I you know uh, um, you know the machine would probably uh, get hacked pretty quickly. How did you get to the profile CLJ? This is oh sorry, profile CLJ is in your tilde dot line. So uh, uh, in your um, in your repo. Sorry, what? In your repo, like oh, it's in gist. It's a gist. So gist dot github dot com slash orb. Okay. Let me. It might be private. Is it? Uh, There's wow, one. you're, you're, you're correct. I want. Yeah. Okay, that is a that is a good point. Okay, I I I, I remember specifically hitting the public and uh, and thinking about that. You can't change it, just can you? Make public. There's a button. Oh, there it is. Make public. Excellent. Okay, now try. Excellent. So this goes in your tilde tilde dot line slash profile slash clj. Uh, make, uh, what what you'll need here? So change password to keep Austin Lambda. Uh, uh, and as soon as you do that, you'll be able to use, uh, uh, we'll be able to, you'll be able to authenticate to the thing. The main thing we're looking down here is the repository auth. So what I've done, it, you ignore deploy repositories until we're ready to push, but what I've said is whenever I try to access a repository at nostacktrace.com, uh, use the username Austin Closure and the password, you know, of course, you know, put, I guess I'll put it up here. Key. Austin Lambda, okay? All right, so the first thing I can do here, so I'll, I'll uh, while you're doing that, create your own project, uh, and let me just pull up my line profile. Line. Still merging in your uh, profiles. Yeah, it, so you know, here, here's what mine looks like, right? So all I've got is, you know, I've pretty much got exactly, actually this is my exact one right here, except for you can see the password here, keep Austin Lambda, right? So if I have that, 
I can actually go into my project here and I can uh, line deploy uh, Austin closure dash snapshots. Okay, so now it's actually built the jar and it's uh, pushed, uh, pushed it out. So if I come over here to my to Nexus, I will, uh, let me look inside snapshots right here. I should see the skunk project right here. And now any of you would be able to use that if you add this repository. So first step is add the stuff to your profiles, create a new project, line new anything, don't worry about the name, you know, spell, make it draft if you can spell it. <laughs> if you know how many R's and F's and E's to put in there. And then just use the thing I just gave you and do line, de you know, line deploy Austin quote. Uh, let me pull it back up here. And when somebody has something, let me know and I'll... Uh, uh, and we'll pull it up and see. And so, you know, uh, what we'll be able to do as soon as you as soon as you push your jar there, then I'll be able to import your jar, and we'll you know be able to collaborate and. Uh... If you're Steve, please push company code so we can uh, <laughs> so you can complete. So we've got your notes already on video. Now we can add your code too. Does anybody has anybody pushed something yet? This uh, this is uh, Alfred. Okay. Uh, so you uh, the other pro pack. Uh, yes. But I don't know if it's a pro feature or not. But I put it in here and then I do a command L for large. Cool. Yeah, use this. Uh, it's really great for putting up little things. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Good to have an answer. <laughs> Anything so oh, there we go. Oh, so somebody has a. So somebody created an Austin closure project. Excellent. And you are version 010 snapshot. Okay. So I'm a. Not who, who made it? I did. No. So. Well, actually, everybody's got the same username, don't they? Yeah, yeah, everybody's got the. So I just set up one user for everybody. I, w I was going to just make it public, but last time I put up a, a project, uh, something like this on a digital. This is running on DigitalOcean, and I actually put up a Tomcat for a student uh, uh, at a. By the way, we have one of my one, uh, one ex student back over here. Let me say. At, at ACC, and we put it up, and I put a Tomcat that anybody could deploy with. I just, yeah, we yeah. left no password, and that machine actually got taken over like within a couple days, right? Yeah, you know, just from people scanning for, you know, uh, uh, scanning for that. And I actually, I didn't even know this, but DigitalOcean, they actually go through and they'll actually make it. Like, I, as soon as I saw it, I want, I was just going in to shut it down because I was done with it. I couldn't even shut it down; it was completely locked from any sort of access until I contacted their support. So I just had to keep paying for the machine until I talked to support. Oh. And then they could unlock it so I could you know, destroy the machine. Charge it to unlock it. Yeah. I've had that happen, yeah. Yeah, and, I'll, you know, and so I, I said, okay, I better not, better not make it public. Even though, yeah, I guess you can't really run anything, you can only deploy to it. But still, I thought uh, better to do it that way. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, if if uh, if if we had different usernames, uh, I think Nexus uh, will give me a little in one of these system feeds. Uh, it will tell me. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm. I'm not. I. I've, I've only been using Nexus uh, for a couple. Uh, you know, for a couple weeks while I've been doing this. So, but in theory, it should be somewhere in here telling me who deployed what and when. All right, so we've got uh, we've got a project here, and it's called Austin Closure. Uh, still, only that one though. Somebody else published something. So how 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 do how do I use this project now? Well, that's the next step. So let, let me add this as a dependency. So all I have to do is. Uh, I'm 
using an integer. There we go. Say Austin closure. Uh, zero one zero. Was it a snapshot? I think so. And I gotta do. I need to add one other thing. So I'm gonna go back to my gist, uh, wherever that is, and add the repository. So this is what I have to add to the project file. Uh, so I have to tell it some of my dependencies are are in a re, you know, in another repository. So let's try this line depths. Keep getting an error message saying no credentials found for Austin closure snapshots. Uh, did you add that to your profile? Did you change? Did you set you the password have, correctly? You may have to make a <laughs> click in the file to see the lines that are at the bottom of the file. Uh, <coughs> your gist. Oh. Did you did you set the password here, like this? I did. To keep and uh, let me see, let me see what you have. And it's not part of this repository's key. No, this is this is just your project CLJ, so you don't need that yet. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's not part of your user. It's a set, it's a top level thing. Okay. So it's parallel to, to user. Yeah. So uh, colon auth is not part of the user map. No. Uh, it's uh, this is user. So this is your user user profile, and then auth is separate. So that's not entirely clear. All right, so you can see when, as soon as I did that, I did line depths and it pulled it down. So now I've got Austin closure there, line depths colon tree. And uh, where are you? There it is. So if you had any interesting code, I don't know what's in there. Let's, uh, let's take a look what's. I'll give you a hint. If you did anything with line, maybe that's what's in there. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> so, what, yeah, so it's going to be tilde slash into <coughs> Austin. Oh, right, Austin closure core foo. I guess we could have done this at the REPL. All right, so, so let's actually use it, start up a REPL. So the jar has the open file source code? Yeah, jars always ship uh, with the closure files in there. Okay. Unless you AOT uh, 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 compile, you don't get class files. But if somebody wants to put AOT all in yours and build it, and we'll take a look at what gets inside and what gets published out, you'll get both in that case. All right, all right so. I got a, uh, a bad request response for here. OK, we'll t let me uh, do this first, Austin. Closure.core. Oh, I gotta require it too, huh? <clears throat> oh, it was Austin dash closure, huh? Yeah. yeah. Let me put it in my code then. All right, so require Austin dash closure dot core as Austin. I think it's because it's trying. Uh, uh, there we go. I guess it won't work the first string. Huh? Well, anyway, so the point is, you somebody has published uh, published this project, put it into our Maven repository. I was able to uh, uh, pull this out, right? Uh, did anybody else? Oh, you had one other problem here. Yeah. What's the command to deploy again? Uh, Just line deploy. Line deploy and then the repository name. So it's going to be, we're going to publish to slash snap, snap, snapshots of the Austin closure dash snapshots. The first thing in the deploy repositories. Uh, so 
but you weren't necessarily blind. So this is yeah, this is the exact file, except for you have your signing key. Yeah, token all. Uh, so go back. Yeah, I mean, if you go back to your REPL. Uh, Try uh, oh try try making it a you're, so you you actually have a release version. I wonder if that's the problem. Make it a dash snapshot. Okay. And see if that makes a difference. Yeah, it's things are very picky between snapshots and our releases, so we'll try we'll we'll, we'll try we'll play with that. Yeah, so just zero one hundred dash snapshot, yeah. There we go. Okay, so Dar ran into a problem. He was trying to deploy a non-snapshot uh, uh, release to, to a snapshot repository. So, so Maven, or at least Nexus, is pretty picky, pretty picky about, pretty picky about that. So you, you'll notice here that I have two uh, two deploy repositories. I have uh, Austin Closure snapshots and Austin Closure releases. So if we wanted to push to push a release version, so uh, so Dar has put out, and let's let's find this first. So this will be a good test. Uh, let me go back to the repository here. Refresh. Oh, I see an ape there. There we go. That's nice. My skunk. Excellent. Uh, Turnstile. <laughs> Right. So he's pushed a 0, 1, 0, 100 snapshot. Okay, so Dar is going to be our guinea pig now. By the way, anybody who wants to play with it, uh, you could, you know, again, you can pull in any of these as long as you have your repository listed this in your project CLJ. You can pull in any of these. But we're actually going to use Dar as a guinea pig now. We're going to actually have him do a release one, right? So change it back from snapshot to release. Okay. So we're going to snapshot and do. So now do the line deploy instead of doing Austin closure. Uh, 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 snapshots, snapshots do releases. Done. Oh, excellent. Stop getting a hit. <laughs> uh, uh, right, so here we are, turn style, turn style, zero, uh, zero, 100, right? And there's there's his, his versions. Turn style is a uh, rate limiting a, a, a project that Dar has a, you know, uh, some extensions for, which we're gonna use in a minute when we get to close jars. Okay, so he was able to do this uh, but he was, you were only able to do this because uh, in uh, when he did, uh, so he did a line deploy Austin closure dash releases or release, right? Yes. So that's what he did. Now, when you do this, it, you know, it will make, you know, so he said his version number with no snapshot, did that. Uh, normally, when you do a release, it needs to uh, it needs to go to a, it needs to sign the jar. But it didn't try to sign the jar because of because we had in our project there's the uh, because right here we had sign releases false, right? Uh, now I saw you had a PGP key in yours. Is your PGP key set up? It is. Okay, so take out this sign release. So I'm gonna have Dar do the same thing now. Change it to like 0101, because you can't read, you won't be able to push 100 again. Okay. So make it a 100, take sign releases false out of your uh, profiles.clj and let's push and see. Uh, if, but you feel free to take the screen too if, you know, when you do it if you want to. Because you're gonna do the close jar stuff in a second anyways. So right after we do this, uh, 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 we'll, we're actually going to put do the same thing. We're going to push our own projects to close jars, and if anybody wants to actually push their project out to close jars, we'll uh, we can we can fill up their uh, their maybe their repository with junk projects, which is you know uh, a noble goal, I say. What app do you use to take your screen? Uh, use the uh, uh, in your uh, classroom in AirPlay. Is it oh, it's AirPlay? Yeah. Why is Snapchat? Why is Snapchat? 
why is snapshots called snapshots? So, so the I, so, so okay, this, this is a good point. Uh, so, when you get to a release version, there's only one. Once you make a release version, it never, it doesn't change, right? So, uh, uh, and then it's like a final thing, like version one, version two, version 100, version 101, right? Version 3.1, 3.2, there's only gonna ever be one jar that is some, you know, version 3.1, right? And, but with snapshots, you, you, you relax that. So like, think of snapshots as like a nightly build, right? So if you want like the nightly build of something, you can keep pushing new, you know, pushing that over and over again, it can change out from underneath you. Right, that's the point of the snapshot, is it's something unreliable you can use for development or testing, but you don't actually want to use in production, right? In production, in order to get a repeatable build, you want only like official, like final versions that aren't gonna change. Because the idea, the idea behind all of this dependency management stuff is that when you do a build and you specify your versions, you're always you're always gonna get the same code you know, each time, right? So, but with a snapshot, you don't have that, you don't have that guarantee. So, for instance, at a threat grid, what we do, what we're doing now, is when we start a new, so we have two week releases, right? At the beginning of the week, we set the snapshot version, right? So we say version, you know, 44 snap dash snapshot. And every time a, uh, something goes on to master, it builds, if it builds successfully, it gets put into our nexus, into our Maven repository. And every, anybody who's using the dash snapshot version will always get the latest built version, right? But when we do a release, we change that those dependencies from snapshot to the actual release, so that once we make the release, like all of those dependencies have release versions, and any time you build that, it will always refer to the same jars and the same jars uh, all the way out. So, does, does that help? I saw, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what you know how they do versioning in other on other platforms. So I can't compare it to really to. I mean. To you know, to Ruby or Python or anything. So, all right. Did you publish yours? Did it sign it? It did, but um, I can't seem to launch this AirPlay app. It's, okay. it's just in your menu. So, are you are you on the Capital Factory or Capital Factory guest? Yes. Oh, you may be on Capital Factory. I'm still. That is weird. Let me uh, let me disconnect and see if that helps. Usually you can steal it. So, do you see it now? Is this called classroom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, it went away for me too. That's not good. Oh, there it is. I see it now. Do you have it? Yeah. Okay. I think the ones with the password on it, you get get off. Oh, you do have to. Oh, I thought you could steal it. The one out there, the big one, you can just steal it. The password one, you gotta get, okay. you have to get off. Okay. All right. So you're doing your. You're gonna do your release. Done. Okay. Excellent. So wait. Did you change sign? Did it ask you for your password? No. Austin closure releases. So go back. Let's sign, and that's saved, right? Yes. And it didn't ask you for your PGP key. No. When I was reading it, it was saying that uh, you could use a PGP. Oh no, you have it. Yeah. Do you, are you running PGP agent or GPT agent? Yes. Okay. So then you're signed automatically in the background. I can see your .asc, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so Dar was able to create that. So, if we look at it, if we look at his now in the releases, uh, so releases refresh here, turnstile. So you did one one hundred one, right? And so we can see here his one hundred version was not signed. There's no .asc files, and here's the uh, the .asc. So he's actually he's actually signed his. Uh, uh, his release version there. So that's pretty cool. So to sign it, you have to set up GPG keys. I'm not going to go through a demo of that uh, because it's, you know, GPG is pretty, like, uh, uh, it's pretty hairy. And I don't know if I can barely get my GPG uh, <laughs> environment uh, set up, uh, let alone uh, help somebody else get theirs going. Yeah, so. the wiki on closures is pretty, pretty good. Explanatory there. Yeah. It's like one page, it should have to do that. Yeah. 
All right, so and that's all there. That's all. That's all there is to to it. Like, if you have a private repo, repo uh, as long as you have credentials, you can uh, uh, you can push that. You can push your jars out. You can put them together. Uh, the only thing I will say that's at all maybe interesting from here from here on out for publishing to your own personal. Uh, oh, sorry, I thought I would have the screen. I'm like pointing at things on my screen. So you jump on. Uh, you may. I think I. Can. There we go. You got it. Yeah. There we go. Uh, is uh, so notice that we have a releases and snapshots. So like I said, Maven requires separate releases. When we push them out, uh, we have to specify are we pushing to the releases repository or the snapshot repository. Uh, but I created a, a group here called Austin Closure Repo. So you'll notice that the uh, in the project, I don't see anything in there. In groups, Austin. I'm, I was browsing the same place as you. Well, let me. Uh, you might have to refresh if you're doing it through the UI. But if I, yeah, if I look here, so I've actually created this as a group that contains both the releases and the snapshots, so that when you're using it for dependencies, you can, you know, you can, you can see them all together if that's what you want. It really depends. Like, if are you trying to get snapshot releases? You're trying to get releases. You, you know, regular ones are trying to get everything. You know, uh, what, yeah. But that's a function of your repository manager. Uh, just the point is, you can combine several repositories. And with Nexus, another cool thing you can do is proxy a repository. Just a second. You proxy a repository. So I can actually proxy Clojars and say every time we use a Clojars, uh, use our local cache of Clojars uh, instead of the outside one. So all of our developers could. We don't, we don't actually do this except for on the build machine. Uh, so once it pulls it down, it will have a cache copy of everything that we, we use. So that's another nice thing is like once once you get one version of it, you can keep it. You, know, you can keep your own local cache. So if Clojars went down, if Maven Central went down, we would still be able to build all of our old uh, uh, all of our old things because we have those cache copies. It's standard. I mean that's standard Java Maven stuff. So uh, uh, if you're if you if you do Maven every day, you like you're like no duh. But you know, if you're like me and ignore it, then you're like oh that's pretty cool. And I didn't know it did that. <laughs> you can do that. So sorry, you had a question. Uh, you said something about. Set this up to where you can pull snapshots and releases from this one. Yeah. So this, group, uh, I guess. So by default, um, would you have would you have to pull? Um, I guess you have to pull projects from either a, a release group or a snapshot group. Well, so this this is combining both of them. So in this case, I set this one up for our demo. So let me actually uh, repository. Yeah, I've never seen one that actually requires you to use a different one for like. Snapshot releases. As well. Uh, well, Clojars has the same thing. Clojars has releases and snapshots, right? Uh, but you don't see that, right? Yeah, because you see a you see a different view of that. I don't know exactly. The, they don't use Nexus. They use I don't know what they use, or at least I don't think they use Nexus. Uh, uh, I guess we'd have to ask uh, you know, a Clojars person what exactly they use. But you notice there's two. Uh, uh, well, actually, I don't have it on here. Uh, I have my. Uh, Proxies for that. Maven Central does. Uh, Maven Central, just like we said, Maven Central only uses the things. Uh, you only use this releases, so we'll never, you'll never pull a snapshot from Maven, from Maven Central snapshots. So, um, okay, so that that was cool. Uh, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll we'll keep that there for the custom stuff. Last thing we want to do is like, okay, close jars. <laughs> How do you publish stuff out to Clojars? Right, Clojars is just a Maven, essentially just a Maven repository. It's something that all uh, Closure projects, or at least all Lining Gen projects, know about, right? So if I go to Clojars, and then uh, just to show you, so like uh, I've published. Remember the Line Meta Jar I showed you before? I published Line Meta Jar out there, and I published PLDB before it got integrated into Core Logic. I, uh, I push that out there. And then you see I have a bunch of these little private repositories. So when you do that, you also get a, 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 your own group. So you can actually publish your own stuff, you know, not as, you know, like we said, the group ID for PLDB with P, PLDB or the, the, the anyways, it was a PLDB slash PLDB, right? Well, you can have uh, an, your org Clojars something and put your own versions. So I've got my own fork of Korma, of Midge HTML checkers, of React PB, and Too Hot, which is the, one of the demo uh, things you can, you know, there's one of the tutorial uh, programs you can use for pushing to Clojars. So I'm, I, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let Dar take the screen. He has a version, so he's been using this turnstile library, the one that we just published to our local, to our 
our private repo. Uh, he has a four, he has a he has a pull request out to it, so it's currently at version 99, right? And he has a pull request for this, and uh, uh, it hasn't been accepted yet, right? But maybe he'd still like to use that. So what he's going to do is he's going to publish that to Clojars, and he's going to publish it so that any, it's not a private repository; it'll be out in the public, and anybody will be able to use it. So do you have? Yeah. So all you need to do this is your group. So go to your project and before before uh, before your uh, before turnstile put org dark clojars darmanto slash that. So that, uh, slash right before turnstile. You might bump up your font if you can. Okay, yeah. So before turnstile up here. So all that Dar has done, well, he actually did some key stuff, which doesn't isn't going to make a difference for you. All he's done is set up a free account on Clojars, right? He's using his own private group ID, and now uh, if you save this, you should be able to line deploy Clojars from the from from the command line. Let's see if we uh, and it should sign it since you've already got your key sign set up. Uh, Oh, you know, it doesn't know about your credentials, so you're going to have to type it in or add it to your file, which you probably don't want to do. This is your Clojars username and password. Uh, do, you know, if, do you know it? Uh, it's saved in LastPass. Can, can, do you, can, you, or can you type it in? You know, if you don't want people to see it, you disconnect and, from the display and type it in. Magic. Security. All right, so just a second. Wait, can you bump up your font just a little bit? <laughs> it's, it's pretty large right now, but I don't think it'll show. Yeah, it's locking up. I'm not even going to show. Unless you do something, though. Say show password. Yeah, so make sure you click that button that says show password. <laughs> so I'll have to set up another key value pair like you did for. Uh, no, you just type it in. Just type in your username. Where, where it's prompting you, just type it on the okay. command line. So you have to authenticate to it. You, yes, you could set it up. If you set it, if you could set that up in your uh, in the set, you know, set that up in your uh, in your uh, profiles.clj. But you probably don't want your Clojars password there. All right. Excellent. So now we have a zero one hundred turnstile. So refresh the page. I, I had to, I had to go f exit full screen and go back. I don't Chrome was Chrome was being. Not very chromey. Okay, so now there's an org Clojars Garmanto turn style. Any of you can use this. This is public. Anybody who has a Clojure project, so uh, uh, would be able to use this version. So actually, let me uh, let me uh, let me pull that into a pro. Well, I don't have the screen, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, but I, you know, you just say org Clojars Garmanto uh, turn style version 0, 100. You could use it in the same place you use 0.99. So as I said before, I've done this several times when I, like I had a Korma, a Korma pull request that was sitting out for like six months, right? And they just didn't pull it, didn't pull it. And rather than wait on them or argue about it, right? I just forked, I put my code on GitHub, right? I created the jar, I published my jar out to Clojars, jars, and then I just referenced that in my own projects. You know, my, you know, my particular ID. Really great. I mean, obviously you want to submit back, but sometimes it just, it doesn't work out there. Sometimes you just want a little variation. Maybe it's something that's not worth sending back or isn't suitable to push back, but you still want to you have some particular hacked version for some reason. Well, you, you, I mean, you can do that. And if you don't have your own personal repo and it's public, you know, it's open source code, right? Somebody might want to use it. You can make it, you know, you can make it, make it available. On Clojars, and that's really all, all there is. Now, Dar did have a signing setup, uh, 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 so it was signed, but you don't have to sign to go to Clojars. But this is a debate. This is an interesting thing, though. So one thing, go down to the bottom of the screen. So notice there's a promote button here, right? So uh, Clojars actually for a while so uh, was trying to make this difference between sort of like snapshots and releases. And releases were more formal. They had all the required information and they were signed because this was very important. Uh, and then I asked on the I asked in the lining again chat room uh, uh, last week about this, and they said, yeah, basically turned all the signing and requiring everything to be signed turned out just to be too big of a thing to uh, to 
to deal with. So they signed up, kind of set that on the back burner. But originally they were supposed to have this promotion. And promotion is like basically taking something, imagine you have like a private repository, but it's not actually truly visible to, the inner, to everybody by default until you do promote. Now that's not active now, right? But that was the idea. The idea, so right now it would sort of be like a, almost like a snapshot version. Like you could tell, you could still, people would still be able to use it if they added the repository stuff. Right, uh, but it, it wouldn't actually be usable in a project until it was promoted, and you could only promote it if it was signed and you had your keys on here and you had you know so license information. So functionality, but they left that big button on. Well, it's still there. I mean, they want uh, someday maybe this will all happen. Right? It was some, this was like so. If you watch, uh, I think it was uh, uh, closure cons from like not this year but last, the year before. Right? Uh, there was a big talk about everything <coughs> new and lining into and uh, all this stuff. And this was all part of the, you know, a plan of what they were going to do. So, but it's not, you know, it, it didn't really end up happening. So you can still use unsigned jars. By the way, uh, go to your pro go to a project and do line depths, line space depth space colon verify. So what line depths verify will do is they'll actually look at all your dependencies and look at all the signatures and tell you what's signed and what isn't signed. Mm -hmm. So uh, closure, some of the closures is signed. Uh, all the org closure stuff's commons. So the stuff from Maven Central, but some of these things are not signed. And so the idea with with the new version, the idea that Lining was going for is that in your final project you should only be using signed things that you can actually confirm, and it's sort of like a, even a higher you know, a higher level of like these are real you know official things because if you think about it, if somebody like if it's not signed, what if like if a hack, if somebody would manage to get into the storage and like added extra stuff to those jar files and then pulled it into your code, you would be running like I mean if you think about it, it's almost I, you almost wonder like why 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 can we get away if we're pulling jars from these places in the first place right like they, we're just taking all this code from out on, you know who knows what's you know right who knows what's actually in the jar file right and running it in our production systems right I mean that's when you think about it it's like man why are we, why are we not all in jail I mean <laughs> you know, it almost seems irresponsible so uh, if there's a lawsuit coming it's completely responsible everybody here agrees so. As an ops guy, I disagree. It's completely irresponsible. <laughs> no, it, it, do, it really does seem like that, right? And so, but that's what they're trying to address by at least having signed things, and at least you know that you're getting it. Like you, it doesn't make any statement about what's in there, but at least it says you're getting the thing from the person you thought you were getting it from, and it hasn't been tampered with, and and like that. So, and they are they are yeah, that is like something that they're trying to get to with lying in. But like I said, it's. Uh, and it's a long way. It's not pre-compiled. It slurps it and sends it back. To the... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's it. So we. So what did we do? We we saw how we saw how Maven Maven works with Clojure. We deployed to a private repository and we deployed to Clojars. If somebody has a project you want to deploy to Clojars. Uh, yeah, and you want to do the signing? Well, we, you know, it's a little bit extra configuration there, uh, but as you saw, I mean, Dar, I mean, Dar, he just created his Clojars account today. I told him before we came because I knew he had this library he, he wanted to use. So now you can say zero one hundred in yeah. of in our part. You you could do that. And, uh, yeah. So and you if you look there, there's probably I think there's still some uh, or you know Norman Richards or Clojars Norman Richards. There's probably still one in our work project that's. Uh, mm -hmm. No, Korma, I think we've updated already. Uh, I think the midge checkers are the st we're still using. So, and that's it. So now there, you have no obstacles obstacles to uh, putting your open your Clojars projects out there. So, I want to see some more, uh, and I want to see a skunk in Clojars. So I'm just saying. <laughs> Somebody think of what skunk could actually be, and let's get it on Clojars. Oh, checker. Something cow say. Cow yeah. Skunk say. All right. Uh, oh, I should. Add, I, we, we do want to get going because it's uh, eight forty now. But any any last Maven questions that you don't want to save for downstairs? Anybody? Something you have seen that? Anyone here written a mojo? A what? A who? For is that a, the Ubuntu thing? I guess I'm old. I'm losing my mojo. 
Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. I was thinking of Juju. That's the, what we want you to write. Right. The, the Maven uh, system, if you're going to add functionality to Maven, you write a Maven plain old Java object, which is a oh, oh, okay. uh, <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> It looks like I'm the only movie. Hey, <laughs> you're like Tigger. <laughs> you're like a beast. All right, so next month, uh, Liberator Real World APIs, and we got room for a, for a pre-talk uh, thing.